So what I'm about ready to do is make a mark on this core. I've established where this foam spar was right here. And that's where I'm going to separate this wing span wise. So what I want to do here is I want to transfer the center of this spar. I'll use this thing and get closer. So I'm going to, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I'm basically going to make a mark right here at the top. And that's where my hot wire is going to go to separate this core. And I'm going to come out here at the tip. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to go in the center there. It doesn't have to be perfect, just real close. So that will establish where I want to cut this core. Now, to make sure right matches left, I'm going to go ahead and transfer the mark I just made from one core to the next. So, I'm going to line it up tip to tip. I'm going to transfer where that spar was here. And then I'm going to line it up root to root. And then I'm going to transfer that mark here. So that way they match. I've got the same amount on each panel. The next step is to hot wire this thing in half. So now that we've established uh, the spar, 330 seconds. So what I need to do now on this back half of this wing, I need to make room for this spar that's going to go down in this wing. So I got to remove 330 second of an inch from this core. And that way it'll maintain the core to my airfoil between root and tip. Now it's real important that this center line around this core is 
just on there. As you can see, the more you start piecing this wing apart, the more critical it is to have those uh, reference lines. So when you put this thing back together, it's accurate. Um, if you didn't have an accurate, really thin center line, hair line, and you started to guess when it came time to put this wing back together, you could be in trouble. Now, if you didn't want to put a full depth spar in this wing, you could just run the carbon over the top and bottom, which might be okay. That way you wouldn't have to separate <clears throat> this core. Uh, I might do that later on down the road on a different wing. I might experiment a little bit. But right now I'm going to go with this uh, full depth spar. Now the next step, I'm going to take this 332nd, and it's probably six, seven, eight pound wood. And it's probably the only place in this airplane that I'll use this heavy of wood. Being a spar, it's uh, it's probably the right place for it. So I'm going to glue these sheets together like this. So when I make up this spar. The grain is going to be running between the top and bottom of the airfoil. So then I'll recess the spar below the foam wing and um, there'll be a little gap and that's where I'll lay the carbon toe into. So this is the depth I need. So I'm going to slice these sheets up here. I'm going to run these through the bandsaw in a stack. So here's a quick little demo. So on this glass bench, I've got MDF hanging out here, maybe, I don't know, an inch and a half. And what I use that for is, in effect, like a shooting board. Now, The neat thing about it, you can run a 36 inch sheet or a 4 foot sheet along this glass edge and true up your sheeting. Thing the shape, it's oversized now. See how many I need here. I have to go over with the bandsaw and slice up some more of them.
So here's a product FastCat makes. It's called the Babe Bot. It's um, I've had these things before. They were bigger, and then I saw Dennis Adamission used one. It was on the uh, video hangout, and I thought, you know what? I never thought about getting a small one. And then I saw Bob Hunt. He was doing a foam wing demo where he's joining some sheeting and he used a syringe I thought man that's that's pretty cool got that little tip on the syringe and it's, obviously it's worked out great for him and then I saw Dennis with this babe bot and I had a big one I used to use the bigger one and then I thought well I'll tell you what this is going to be almost like a syringe but it's got two tips. It's got a chisel tip, the wider one, and it's got this one that's perfect if you're going to join uh, sheeting. I don't know if you can see it or not. It lays, you just barely squeeze it, and it puts out a perfect little bead of this glue. And what it is is Type Bond 3, and that's what Bob was using. Type Bond 3. So. I'm pretty happy with this little babe bot. So when I tape this uh, sheet up, I sort of put some tension on it. I pull it so it, you know you see where it curls up. Put some tension on it. Squeeze it back. Wipe the excess off. And then when I do it this way, I put more tension. So I guess the tension of the tension of the masking tape sort of cancels itself out. Now spar is going to run this way. This wood is going to be cut shy of this foam core. And then over the top of this end grain is where this carbon fiber is going to sit. So the carbon fiber is going to run from the root all the way out to the tip. Maybe two layers here, one layer here. So this will be cut a little undersized, glued into the core. The core is joined together. The carbon toe is laid down in the notch on top of this end grain. And then I'll cap it with just a little bit of wood to make it easier to sand. And that wood in effect will transfer the load from the carbon to the skin. Because then once it's sheeted, Let's just pretend this is the spar, then the sheeting on the leading edge will come up and overlap that spar just a little bit. The spar, the way I have it configured, is in the compression. So I'm not going with the spar strength grain span wise. The only thing I'm utilizing the balsa wood for is the compression, the compressive strength to keep those carbon beams equal distance apart.